So Eddie ended up working as a ranch hand in West Texas. Eddie, tell us what that was like. It was nothing but hard work. We got up at four in the morning and did a day's work before we even had breakfast. For instance, we would milk the cows, feed the chickens, gather up the eggs, beat the horses. And as low man on the totem pole, I had the privilege of cleaning out the horse doors, the stable, and put in fresh straw. After that, we would go in and have breakfast. After breakfast, we would start the ranch work. This might involve keeping the fences mended so the cattle wouldn't wander all over, and repairing the corrals in case the cattle had to be brought in for dipping to get rid of any ticks. Then we might go out to various parts of the ranch to check on the water tanks and see if the windmills needed repairing. In the wintertime, we would have to chop holes in the ice so the cattle could drink. And we had to make sure the salt lakes were not depleted because cows needed to lick salt for their system just like people need salt in their system. These were all routine things that had to be done, but never shown in the movies. <laughs> Even riding a horse, it wasn't for pleasure, it was for doing a job. It was nothing but hard work. The main events at any ranch were the fall and sp spring roundups, where the Rancher could keep track of how many calves he had, as well as to look after the health. It basically involved dehorning, vaccinations, castrating, if it was a bull calf, and branding. To do all this, four men formed a branding team. The first time, they had me flanking and holding the hind legs. I was only 90 pounds at the time, and the calf weighed at least 250 pounds. So naturally, I had trouble manhandling the calf down. Finally, one of the old timers said to me, Eddie, you're not going to last half an hour. Let me show you what to do. I said, you grab him under the front leg and, and under the flank. As soon as the calf made a little jump, he put his knee under him to help him jump higher. Then he flopped him on the ground and practically knocked his breath out. And before the calf knew it, he was dehorned, vaccinated, castrated, and branded. <laughs> By the time they shook the rope off his neck, he was running back to his mama, and the calf was probably screaming at the top of his lungs, look at what you did to me, mama. That was when I realized, okay, Ed, you don't have body mass. You're not even very strong. You're going to always have to find an easier way to do things. Little did I know how useful this lesson would be in the prison camp, where the bulk of our work involved carrying heavy loads. So after two years of working as a ranch hand, Eddie decided to join the Army so that he could continue working with horses in the cavalry. So at the age of 17, he became a member of the 131st Field Artillery, the 36th Division, an all-Texan unit, and no horses. <laughs> so after nine months of training at Camp Bowie, his unit was shipped out to the Pacific on November the 21st, 1941, as reinforcements for the, in the Philippines. So, Eddie, tell us what happened next. We landed in Honolulu on the 29th of November. And two days later, we left for the Philippines. We, seven of the ships joined us, and we formed the Pensacola Convoy. We heard about the Pearl Harbor bombing down near the Phoenix Islands. And we are read the convoy was diverted to Brisbane, Australia. So I think we were probably the first troops overseas after the war was declared. My unit was sent to Java in January of 42 
to help the Dutch defend the island against Japanese invasion. We were no match for the Japanese military forces, and we capitulated on March 8th. And it was among the 700-odd American POWs who were sent to Burma to help build a railroad that would connect the supply lines between Bangkok and Rangoon, thereby saving the Japanese army 1,200 of sea miles, sea travel from Saigon around the Malayan Peninsula to Rangoon. So this railroad, which stretched 262 miles through the tropical jungles of Burma and Thailand, was built by 61,000 Allied POWs and 250,000 Asian civilians, all working under brutal slave labor conditions. It was completed in a record 14 months at the cost of 12,000 POW and 70,000 Asian lives. So Eddie, tell us about the working conditions. We worked 10 days and got a day off. We got paid 10 cents a day. We got up at four in the morning, had some junk for breakfast, got our tools and marched out to the job site. The right of way had been cleared by the natives. So what we had to do was build the railroad track, keeping it as level as possible because rail engines can only run up a certain grade. The Japanese engineers decided our allotment. They didn't care whether it was mud, dirt, sand, or rock. They would measure out X number of meters, how wide, how deep. And we had to finish the work allotment before we could quit for the day. The average was 14 hours a day. We have a saying that we worked from can't see to can't see.